Now, the idea of using machine learning and advanced computer technology to look for techno signatures that we might have otherwise missed, what led you guys to sort of review what SETI was doing and how they look for signals and how they might look more deeply and better? I guess I can take on this one. So what initially kind of motivated this work, at least for me, was rather natural. Like it was just me being curious and interested in implying emerging kinds of tech in computer vision and, and stuff like that to the field of SETI. So we realized that quickly that deep learning algorithms are super effective in all kinds of areas of science, not just SETI and astronomy, pretty much everywhere. And so we we're basically looking for, or at least I was at least looking for hard problems to solve that hasn't been approached with some kind of deep learning solution. And so initially that was kind of the idea. And so we wanted to see if this kind of technology could be applicable to this field in some meaningful capacity. So that kind of got us started in looking at these classical algorithms when we realized that traditional techniques were, it could have been improved. So one aspect is looking for signals that us engineers and programmers might not anticipate to find in the data. I mean, so how do you even account for something like that that you can't even anticipate? And so at least with the promise of modern deep learning is the idea of generalization beyond your data set and beyond what programmers can tell it to do. We thought that this will be an interesting solution to this kind of problem, right, in, in SETI in the sense that we might not know exactly what the signal might look like, but we can train an algorithm to anticipate something that us engineers might not anticipate. So that was the kind of motivation to relook at and reinvestigate how we traditionally been doing SETI and see if can give another kickstart with uh, deep learning and machine learning. What data set did you use to uh, search through? So we searched through a previously searched data. It was data collected back in 2016 to 2017. It's an L band, so between one to two gigahertz range. And it was about, I think, a thousand observation sets of six observations, which ends up being 800 or so unique targets. So 820 unique stars targets. And yeah, that was previously searched by TurboSETI or our traditional algorithm and uh, returned. We concluded that from that algorithm search was there is no interesting signals of interest to reobserve. Now, what were the most interesting signals? So you picked something up, signals in the noise that were missed. And now these signals, what are interesting about them and why did why why did SETI miss them in the first place? So the question is what uh, what is so interesting about these signals that we found and why did the previous algorithm miss them, right? So these eight signals that we have identified, they are all narrow band in the frequency emission range. That what that means is that it is very likely some kind of technological signature because otherwise astrophysical sources tend to have a broad band of emission range. So these ones are narrow band and so we think that they are very likely of a technological origin. Secondly, they are all drifting in frequency and in time. And that tells us that these signals come from a host stars that have relative motion compared to that on Earth. And we detected these signals in the so-called cadence observations. When, when we observed these specific stars, we saw the signals. And when we look elsewhere, we didn't see them anymore. So that's, that's, a, that's a way to filter between radio interference from Earth, which are near field, and will then be seen by sort of from many different locations on sky versus signals that come from a star that would be seen only at specific, only when the telescope is pointed to the stars. Now, have any of these signals, have you been able to determine if they are repeating? We tried to reobserve these signals and we didn't find them again, at least you know, approximately five to six years after they were first observed. So we looked at them back in 2022, around in May, and we didn't see them again. And that's really the tricky part of this with SETI is, is 
trying to <laughs> trying to reestablish yeah. that a signal was actually there. But this drift, so that drift would not be characteristic of Earth interference, right? And why is that? The drift tells us that it comes from something that has a relative motion. So it is possible. Well, how how to maybe I should say no. Like if the signal does, if there is any signal that comes from another star, for example, we would see it drifting because of the relative motion of this star relative to the Earth. Now, having the drift though is not hundred percent foolproof. That tells us that it must come from another star because it is possible still on Earth that the source that is transmitting the signal could be moving or it could be from a satellite that is moving. So in other words, the, there's there's fingerprints here. So yeah. first you have narrowband, which is unnatural. There are very few radio signals in nature that are narrowband. But not only that, but you have the proper drift. In other words, you can see but what other methods, when they took the data set, what other methods did they use? I mean, did they wiggle the telescope and move it off and back on source? Or is are these just one-offs, a series of one-offs? that, or, or did any of them come from the same star as two different detections over the uh, period the data was taken? We did do this on-off, on-off approach where we took the telescope, nodded back and forth to see if the signals disappear when we don't look at it. And they happened to have that property and so that was very suspicious and then another interesting point was i think a couple of them are actually from the same star or same target actually on the top eight that we found only five of them are actually unique so a couple of them were same but uh, some of them were observed at different times so it'll be like you look at them and then a couple of days or a day later you see them you look at the star again we register another hit but it was at a completely different part of the frequency band, so we didn't really associate those two signals together. So it is probably indication of interference, again, just a very pathological interference, so to speak. But yeah, that was the setup that we had. We did look back and forth, and we did find some, like, we did find some signals that were convincing, but from the same star, but at a different time. 